And now that we've actually created our models and created our data initializer and school context, we would like for the database to actually be created automatically and then be able to see that database and the data in it without actually using our application. On startup, any framework has a mechanism, uh, that, or excuse me, .NET Core has a mechanism to actually go ahead and create that data. And I'm gonna start uh, that process here in program.cs. What's new to .NET uh, Core 2.0 is that we can actually replace the startup CS for the most part with program.cs. What I'm gonna do though is keep the um, old habits die hard, everything in startup.cs and just go ahead and add my code to build out my SQL Server database here in program.cs. So type the following code, replace everything you see here for the main and type the code that you see here now. Get our dependency injection, our school context, our database initializer is good. Okay, go ahead and type that, pause here, and type it all out. Okay, now they have this typed out. What we have is a request for the service, school context, and also a method to call the initialize of our DB initializer. This initialize method will go ahead and create these entity entities in the entity sets and therefore in the SQL Server tables. If there's ever a change to the actual database itself or to the table architecture um, or structure, it will go ahead and delete the database and reinitialize, at least based on the current default settings. Now let's go ahead and go ahead and run your application. And again, we do not yet have these views configured or set up, so you'll get an error if you click on them. Well, they're not linked to anything, so there's no error. Let's go ahead and open up Explorer. And go into our Drive C, Users, and your current user profile folder. And you'll actually see that it created the SP College 1.mdf and LDF. Go ahead and stop your project from running. And what we're going to do is open up Server Explorer here. And we're going to actually go and view the data in our file. So go click on this little database icon here. And it's going to be a SQL Server database file. Again, we know that it's in Drive C, Users, Profile Folder, SQL Server, or spcollege.mdf. Go ahead and use Windows Authentication, test our connection, succeeded, select OK. Then over here, you'll be able to see the database, scroll down and see all the tables that were created, and hopefully actually see our data. And there it is. That's the seeded data. And that's it for this lesson. That just verifies that the data is created. And you can actually use this to keep track of uh, whether your changes were made or data's were databases or in tables were initialized.